I'm Caroline Krivenos. And I'm Esther Guevara. Coming up on today's show, we look back on a celestial event and into one elective you could take next year. Stay tuned, you're watching Roar TV. Hey Oviedo, it's Caroline. Hey Oviedo, I'm Peyton Kane. Oviedo, I'm Kaden Martin. Hey Oviedo, it's Yana with today. And this is your main five from Building Five. Good morning, Oviedo. It's Friday, December 1st, and this is Roar, Roar TV, TV Weekly. Weekly. As we start wrapping up the first semester, underclassmen aren't that far away from selecting the new courses for the following year. And if you're interested in a class that reflects leadership and community, NJROTC might be the place for you. Here's reporter Jack Vigliotti with more. Left, 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 right. ROTC has been helping students excel in and out of schools for years, and there's a multitude of reasons for why people have or should join. It's one of those classes where um, it's an elective, but it pays benefits for you too, because if you take two years of ROTC, it counts as your, um, your PE credit and your fine arts credit. Not only do people do it for those educational reasons, but also for more wholesome reasons. Um, you, you learn a lot about like self-respect and leadership and like just learning how to be a better person. You know, if like someone struggles with who they are, like they can come join RTC and they'll find lots of friends and learn a lot about themselves. Also, this fun elective allows for students to be able to become leaders in their own right. So CEO, I gotta make sure everybody is doing their jobs. Uh, I'm, I'm just the boss and kind of delegating, that's all I do. Um, I was in charge of the team, so I basically picked the people to do events, and I would also command the events, so I just, I ran the whole team. And as leaders, students learn valuable tools that they can use in real life, but ROTC doesn't stop inside the school, they used to do various competitions outside of it. Well, ROTC in competitions, we have three major, um, competition teams. We have air rifle, drill competitions. This year we're adding a new program, Sea Perch. In marksmanship, the students compete for state championship, trying to be the most consistent in the range. Um, we fire Olympic style 10 meter uh, range with a 1.77 millimeter air rifle. It's the same air rifle that's used in the Olympics. Well in drill, they also could be for trophies, but in a different way. Um, for example, like we do drill, so that's the, all the marching and doing the routines and doing literally the same thing as everybody else. We also do get to throw rifles and then we do like competition color guard. And lastly, RTC has something brand new in store. Which is underwater robotics, where we'll actually compete against other high schools uh, using a swimming pool and um, underwater submersibles that the students build. All of these things help to build up ROTC into what it is today. For more TV, I'm Jack Figliotti. The annual Toys for Tots collection drive is collecting new unwrapped toys, which will be distributed as Christmas gifts to less fortunate children in the community. All new toys can be dropped off in NJROTC or the front office. Last day for donations is December 8th. Saturday, December 9th is Breakfast with Santa, an all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast. That includes free pictures with Santa. Breakfast will be served from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tickets are $10, but kids 10 and under are free. Proceeds benefit Oviedo Journalism, which includes us here at Roar TV. Good morning, Lions, and welcome back to another edition of Beta Buzz. I'm Zach Griffin, Mr. Beta Buzz. And I'm Maya Cabal, Miss Beta. We hope you all had a restful break. National Beta Club Convention is coming fast. Convention is January 25th through the 26th. It's a great time and so much fun. You'll be field tripped out on that Friday all day and we'll go down to the Gaylord Palms Resort. You get field tripped out, it's a great time and you get to stay at a resort. You compete in many different categories. Betas, we also need 200 tissue boxes and 600 large expo markers by Monday, December 4th. For every six boxes of tissues, we get one point, and for every eight markers, you get one point. Please get colorful markers, not just black. We are trying to make it colorful. 
Job offs can be made in the front office. Please make sure your name is on the bag, not on the boxes, because these are for the teachers. You can earn up to four points with just tissues, markers, or a combination of both. If you'd like to earn points, Toys for Tots donations will be sure to be sure to drop them off in Miss Shay's room, not the front office. She'll be in her classroom every morning at 7 a.m. The deadline for this is December 6th. Please only donate toys that are new, unwrapped, and have a value of $10 or more. You can earn up to four points for Toys for Tots, and keep in mind that more expensive toys are worth more points. Beta Club will also be participating in the Asian Lantern Festival at the Central Florida Zoo again this year. This is a great event, and you do not want to miss. It's true. I did it last year, and all the lights were beautiful. Check your campus for release forms and sign-ups for all these events. You will also be signing up for the entire shifts. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's edition of Beta Buzz. This past fall, the U.S. experienced something rare from the cosmos. And it's going to happen again in the upcoming months. Reporter Allison Alfred had her eyes on the sky at the Orlando Science Center. Have you ever heard about the stars or planets coming into alignment? Last month, both came into alignment for a special phenomenon that only occurs, well, less frequently than a blue moon. On October 14th, a solar eclipse traversed the United States and the Orlando Science Center didn't hesitate to celebrate the occasion. What we are doing here at Orlando Science Center today is we are celebrating the annular solar eclipse. The eclipse, basically what we're seeing, an eclipse happens when, when the moon gets between the Earth and the sun. So what we're experiencing, you know, the moon does not travel in, you know, an exact straight line orbit for the Earth. It wobbles. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. But what we're seeing right now is it's in a really good alignment between, right between the sun and the Earth. What we saw at the Science Center was the annular eclipse. You may have heard of a total solar eclipse too. The difference between them is when you have a total solar eclipse, the moon completely blocks out the sun, casting this really cool black and white effect. The annular eclipse mostly covers the sun, and if you're lucky enough, you'll get to see the famous ring of fire effect. So what an eclipse is, is you're getting that shadow from the moon coming across on the earth. While residents of Florida got to observe a partial eclipse, other parts of the country got to see the full ring of fire effect. Well, while we were there, it was because we were in San Antonio, it was 100% coverage. So we could see the ring of fire and it actually got like really dark around the time when it happened. And we were at Six Flags Fiesta Texas when it happened. So they made a huge deal out of the event. There was uh, fireworks and they had, they played Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash when the solar eclipse happened. And you could see like the shadow of the moon covering the sun and it was like a ring of light. It was really cool. If you missed this annular solar eclipse, that's okay. There's going to be a total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024, that will be stretching from Texas all the way to Maine. Until then, keep stargazing. I'm Allison Alfert, signing off. Hey Oviedo, I'm Aubrey with your O-Town Weekly Sports Update. Boys soccer posted a draw from 1-1 against Boone on Monday. Roman Cliento had a great strike from the 30 with about 10 minutes remaining in the first half. They got their first loss of the season Wednesday against the state finalist Bishop Moore 2-4. Girls varsity soccer defeated University of Orange City 9-1 on Monday. Julia Ross and Mia each scored their first varsity goals. Tuesday they defeated Lyman 8-0. Also on Tuesday, girls varsity basketball lost to Haggerty 77-19. Lily Jacobus had 12 points. Wednesday, they lost to St. Cloud 32 to 56. Josie Harsberger had 10 points. Boys basketball won 58 to 50 overall to Lake Howell on Wednesday. Varsity was led by Alex Harper with 22 points and four rebounds. Girls weightlifting lost 61 to 29 to Haggerty on Wednesday. Marnie McHugh, Calesta Stoner, and Clara Canada all placed first in their weight class. Tonight, boys basketball hosts Lake Mary at 7.30 p.m., boys soccer hosts Lake Brantley at 7 p.m., and girls basketball travels to New Smyrna Beach at 6 p.m. Go Lions! That's all for our weekly sport update. Now back to the studio. One week down and two more to go before exams begin. The first weekend of December is upon us, and we hope it's a great one for you. Have a great day, and, and as, as always, always, Go Lions! Go Lions.